If you don't think male privilege exists, you are wrong. What's up, everyone? Antonio Fletcher back with you once again. This is going to be a deconstruction of Lacey Green's Brawlers video, Trans Men Explain Male Privilege. Now, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but your average Lacey Green video is easily worth a thousand face palms. Without further ado, let's get into the video now. is often ignored because it seems invisible and subjective to those who benefit from it. Oh, that's right, Lacey. You mean how it's typically easier for a woman to grow on YouTube like you did than it is for a man? But trans men have experienced both sides of the gender-divided society, so I'm gonna let them explain male privilege in their own words. Experience both sides? What I want to know is why in the world a society which is dominated by male privilege making it even permissible for anyone in this male-dominated society to switch genders? Wouldn't a male-dominated society very likely think a trans man who once assumed the identity of a woman wasn't fit to be like a man who was biologically born as one? Or do social injustice wars like Lacey think our society is so dominated by male privilege that men would even want more dominance by trans men in it? <laughs> Already this video first is going downhill quick. Male privilege is the bull idea that men are better than anybody else. Yes, because there is absolutely zero chance there are any third wave feminists out there who think women are better than everyone else. Is that seriously how the social injustice word types want to build their case here? Male privilege is the ability to move about the world in the way that you want to. And no women move about this world the way they want to, right? Never mind the fact that female college students do it all the time in many first world countries in the world. Never mind the fact that tons of universities have women's studies courses obviously taught by women professors. Never mind the fact that Lacey herself, a woman, was able to go about the world the way she wanted to so that she could be the host of this brawless segment, or brainless as Hunter Avalon puts it, on MTV and get paid by them. Yep. Gotta love those privileged men who apparently run the world and didn't want to see women like Lacey in a position to influence millions of people in order to run her mouth about male privilege. Just gotta love it, folks. It's the experience of being left alone and free to be yourself. I could literally make the same points I just mentioned to refute this nonsense. But let's just grant for the sake of argument, I assume this point is true. You know who would also love to be left alone and free to be themselves? Those who are classified as nerds and geeks in school, whom are often made fun of. You don't see nonsensical arguments about those who aren't classified as nerds and geeks in school with non-nerd slash geek privilege. So this idea about a group of people not being left alone to be themselves does not necessitate an argument for privilege. It simply means you have people out there who will be jerks to certain groups of people because of personal insecurities within themselves. Let's continue on addressing this nonsense. Privilege is also like the absence of experience. As a man, I have the privilege of getting on New York City subway train at one in the morning and don't have to worry about a man wagging his dick at me. That is a male privilege that I like. Okay, first of all, men who do that kind of crap would seriously have to be in the extreme minority to begin with. Especially for the fact that men are very subject to being accused for rape, even without proof. So why in the world would a dude want to risk that kind of negative attention, unless he's just a total moron? I literally have not seen consistent evidence, or much evidence at all, to indicate this is how most guys would act and do like. Secondly, you act as if men alone are subject to this kind of behavior, as if women won't see a certain way to send signals to a dude. Thirdly, it's possible you might have just misread the signal and the guy showed genuine, natural interest in how you look. It's not a crime to be attracted to someone of the opposite sex. This is not even remotely close to making an argument about male privilege. The first time I noticed I had male privilege was when I was walking home from hanging out with a bunch of friends who happened to be women. They had expressed being a little worried about walking home in the dark, and while I was walking, I realized that I had no worry in the world about being talked to or stared at or followed or assaulted. You really don't think men run the risk of getting assaulted on the street at night? It's a little something called being mugged. This is not a men or women exclusive thing, and again, 
people who want to be horrible and do horrible things to a certain group of people does not prove privilege. That proves that certain people are horrible to certain groups of people. From the time blacks were enslaved to the time of the civil rights Martin Luther King Jr. era, the argument was not white privilege, but the argument was about racists who wanted to oppress blacks. Many non-blacks were against racism, which is why many whites died in the war to stop slavery, and also why society evolved away from the segregation, which played there in the civil rights era. So a man could just walk down the street and no one is going to bother him, no one's gonna ask him to smile, no one's gonna ask him where he's going, no one's gonna ask him if he's married, no one's gonna ask him if they can walk with him, but this is something that I know women experience every day. Post-transition life, oh my God, walking down the street is so glorious, I can actually think. Now, I think catcalling is definitely an issue, but is it an issue because of this thing about privilege? No. It's an issue because in our culture, men tend to approach women in almost any kind of situation, be it at the gym, in the cafeteria, or in this case, on the street. The answer to dealing with this issue clearly isn't passing it off as something about privilege any more than the answer to dealing with the mistreatment of those who are classified as nerds and geeks in school is passing such things off in the privileged context. Throwing the privilege tag upon everything isn't going to solve anything. First time I ever experienced male privilege was on social media. I've always been the type to express myself and talk real crazy. And when I did it prior to transitioning, it wasn't okay. But the minute that I transitioned and everybody looked at me as that male figure, it was like, oh man, that's hilarious. I'm like, hey guy, I've been hilarious all this time. So what are you talking about? I really don't need to destroy this nonsense as it's self-evidently bad. But just to humor myself, no pun intended, I'll give several points on this. First off, female comedians don't seem to have this issue. They are funny wherever they go and wherever they are, whether on social media or not. Second, what in the world does social media have to do with being seen as more or less funny? If you aren't funny, you aren't going to be funny, whether you're on social media or not. It literally makes no difference to whether you're a man or a woman. Third, if being a man means you'll be more likely seen as funny, then wouldn't that mean that A, Women who are seen funny are more than likely even more hilarious than men since they allegedly have to be that much better to be seen as funny to begin with. And B, if being a man means you're more likely to be seen as hilarious, then do men have to, to do the self-evaluation of themselves to find out if their laughs are solely because of their jokes or their gender? In the real world, nobody really cares about what gender you are as long as you are funny. This anecdotal testimony is ridiculously suspect and unreliable at best. An unexpected aspect of male privilege for me was being taken way more seriously than I was before. And it's funny because I have all the same ideas, still thinking about the same things, and yet sometimes I would literally just be talked over or laughed at. Now people will often quiet down. Where is this idea in society that men are talking over women and laughing at them? Men generally are trying to get women to be their girlfriends and wives, so I'm not sure how men laughing and talking over women is going to accomplish that task very well. It's actually quite often pro-abortion women telling men to shut up about abortion because there aren't women, and sadly many pro-abort men have no problem with this. I'm pretty sure women like Lacey Green with well over 1 million subscribers are hardly having any problems with getting men and women to take them seriously. Given that there are a ton of women teachers and tons of circles of academia and tons of women on television, I highly suspect it had nothing to do with this trans man formally identifying as a woman. And having experienced that from both sides of the spectrum, as female and male, I call bullshit on that right now. Just like I call BS on this entire segment. So let's recap what we've heard so far. What we've heard so far is basically only men can move as they please. Body signals, catcalling, and things like being a comedian, being taken more seriously on social media if you're a man. <laughs> Oh man, because if men generally gave similar petty points alleged about female privilege, they'd be looked at as anti-women, misogynist bigots. Yep, really loving that male privilege there. 
Male privilege and sexism isn't just a problem for women, but it's also about liberating ourselves. Masculinity is very diverse. Masculinity is what it is to you. You don't have to be a brute. You don't have to be an athlete. And my masculinity looks like a man who likes puppies and babies. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, because I'm pretty sure long before this social injustice warrior era existed, men could still love puppies and babies and yet still not be seen as any less than men. Since when did being a man mean you had to be anti-puppies and anti-babies? In no way does this require some liberation. This nonsense is clearly being pulled out the sky and not being argued on any semblance of reality and facts. I was in the club this night and my brothers are around. I think it might have been single ladies. Something came on. And I'm like, oh, oh, the single ladies. Oh, the single. And they go, you're a man now. Men don't wild out to Beyonce like that. And I said, but it's music. Well, then perhaps you need some new friends who are open to any kind of music in the club. This literally has nothing to do with being a man or needing to be liberated as a man. It depends upon the group of people you are around. You could quite get, easily get the same response if the group of men you are around don't like rock music and only listen to rap, hip hop, and R&B. This is not even remotely due to being a man at all. Stop acting as if men must think act and like what you like. Certain men aren't going to like wilding out to music like Beyonce. They shouldn't be forced to prefer what you prefer. Get over it and get you some new friends. There's no one way to be a man. There's a spectrum of masculinity and just like be chill. Nobody ever said there was only one way to be a man and it literally has nothing to do with the so-called liberation to be a man in more than one way. You cannot liberate what it needs to be liberated in the first place. If a guy wants to really understand male privilege and understand what it is, talk to women. Don't need to because it doesn't exist. You know what? Scratch that. Let's pretend for the sake of argument male privilege exists in certain aspects. But you also know what? So does female privilege. Women are more likely to believe for being raped by men, even without evidence, and men are, conversely, if they were raped by women. Single parent women are more likely to win cases of child custody and receive child support than men. Men absolutely have no rights to their own biological child and womb. Women are more likely to serve less sentences in prison for the same crimes as men. And these are only just a few examples. But let's be dishonest and yet again try to dishonestly frame the issue as our obviously pro women society as being anti-women. Step back, listen to what other people are going through, ask them what they're going through, and I think you'll see that the world doesn't run exactly the way you think it does. Or rather, you should stop taking talking points from liberal social injustice warriors because the real truth is the world doesn't run the way you think it does. You're doing nothing wrong by having privilege. It's just what you do with it that matters. You know, I'll be on board with y'all with this privileged idea once I see the video by y'all same group of people about female privilege. Until then, you, nor anyone else in this segment, especially Lacey, deserve to be taken seriously. I'd like to thank all of our guests for giving their time and thoughts on this issue. We'll see you next time. You know what else is male privilege? We actually have a bunch of men having to talk about what male privilege is, even though women have been talking about this for years. We ain't You know, the biggest nonsense in this whole video is the fact that trans people are sitting here whining about privilege or failing to point out a crucial question. Why would any trans woman want to go from being a man to a woman if this much privilege as claimed by these people exists for men only? Just a little something to think about. Well, that's it for this video, so thanks for watching. If you liked it, comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, if you didn't like it, just leave some constructive criticism in the comment section. Stay tuned, as videos are posted regularly. Take care, God bless, and peace.